Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to review another Sonoff product and this is the Sonoff DW2 Wi-Fi and this is a Wi-Fi door or window sensor and I think this is going to be a somewhat a unique device because uh, uh, while Sonoff is introducing their line of Zigbee devices and I think these battery operated devices are usually more suited to Zigbee because they tend to be lower power consumption um, so we don't see a lot of battery operated Wi-Fi devices nowadays that are uh, not that are using Wi-Fi instead of using Zigbee but nevertheless if you only need a few of these devices and for example and you don't want to invest in the Zigbee bridge which uh, is required to use any Zigbee devices then you can just have these because well it can connect directly to the Wi-Fi and you know it's battery operated so it's just going to work and you can in integrate it into the EV link app and then just use it as like a regular window or door open sensor in this video I'm going to show you how you set this device up in the EVLink app and how you can use it in various automation scenarios because well obviously it's only a sensor so you won't be able to control it but you would be able to use the inputs from this device to control other devices. To be honest there is not much to be said on this device you are basically getting two boxes in this bigger box as you can see it runs on two AAA batteries you just unclip the uh, button part which is actually held on quite firmly so I probably need a small device to unclip it but um, yeah there is nothing really inside you just have the two batteries and this is the magnet that you need to align as shown by the arrows and then obviously it would detect the you know the door or the window opening so these two contacts will apart from each other and that would detect the the opening action you are receiving this device in this white box and in the white box you are getting the actual door and the window sensor you are also getting a QC leaflet you are getting a user manual which is the usual son of user manual with a few different languages and it shows you how you can pair the device with the EVLink app and also how you can install it you can see how you separate the pack you install the batteries and you use the provided sticky tape to fix it on your door or window. The manual says that the main unit and the magnet needs to be not more than five millimeters apart, which I think is reasonable. Actually, this is going to be the first sort of device that I have, which needs to be paired with Bluetooth. So that's going to be interesting to see how that works. I know we are going to talk about the DW2, but I have these uh, the 4CH and the 4CH Pro in the backdrop because I want to use these uh, for some of the automation examples. All I want to do now is put in the batteries. So you remove the back cover, which takes a little bit of force and then probably the best is to use a flat nose plier and then just basically pry the back from here. And other than that, it's two AAA batteries which you install like so. And to get the device into pairing mode, I needed a pin to push the button in that small hole. And as you can see, the LED is now blinking. So now all I have to do is I have to start a pairing mode in the app. So I'm just going to place it here. And within the app, I just click on the big plus button. And this is the first device that needs to use Bluetooth pairing. So I select that and I click next. And I just wait for my phone to find the BW2, sorry, DW2. And I'm guessing it would be this one. So I select. And I just specified my Wi-Fi SSID and password. And now it is pairing. Oh, that was quick. So I'm just going to rename this to DW2. And I'm going to place it in the living room. Okay. And now the device is connected and it is sensing that the battery is full, which is good because I use new batteries and the door sensor is open. And if I do it, then it is closed. Oh, that was easy. And that was really, really quick. Because this is a simple sensor device, the screen is also going to be much simpler. So we have seen that we have a battery indicator and we have a visual representation of the uh, actual state. So the the sensor and the magnet is uh, uh, detached from each other and it also says that the door sensor is open and if I place the sensor on top of it then the door is closed 
And well, that's pretty much it. Well, this is a sensor it and it shows the actual status. If we go into the settings, which is the three dots on the top right, we can see that we can rename the device if we want to. That's fine. We can check the, the version, which is the current version. We can change the assignment. We can put it into a different room or in a different house or home. We can share this uh, device across the multiple EV-Link users so they can also observe the state of this uh, sensor. And we can also turn on push messages. So we can turn whether we want to receive a push message whenever the sensor is closed or open. It took a little bit of time, but I opened and closed the sensor and now I've got a message that uh, DV2 was closed or DW2 was closed. And if I open it, then at some point I should get another message that the sensor was open. And the good thing about this, yeah, I've received it now. And the good thing about this type of sensor as opposed to a door, door sensor that we have seen many years ago, which worked on the RF, then with the RF sensor, you only got a message that the door was open and you didn't get a message that it was closed. So now you are actually getting uh, live status uh, and you always know whether that contactor is opened or closed. Okay, I don't think I need these notification messages anymore, but I can just turn them off for now and I can just delete these messages. So I think uh, what we need to do is we need to set up a simple automation because on its own this sensor is not really useful. You need to set up some scenes in order to use that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an automation so the output of uh, this 4CH, let's say the fourth output, always shows the status of this door sensor. So I'm going to create a new scene and I say if smart device DV2 uh, door sensor is open then I select the 4CH channel 4 and that should be on. And of course you can set up the effective period. I want that to be running 24 7 and say window is open. Oops. And I create another one. So again, if smart device DV2 sensor closed, then smart device 4CH channel 4 should be off. Save, save. So the window is closed. And now I've realized that for the example I wanted to mention, I should have set this up the other way around because I wanted to say that this is a scenario that you can set up so that your, when your window is open, your AC automatically uh, turns off, not to waste energy. But I should have set it up the other way around. But because you see that as soon as the window opens, then the relay comes on. Well, this is the time when the relay should be on. And if I close it, then the relay goes off. But of course, you can just easily go into the scenes and change the way it is configured. But hopefully you can see a very simple example how you could use this to control another son of device. And of course, these are the only two things that you can set up because the window is either on or off. And then you can also control a, another device to be either on or off or the other way around. I think this is a very useful device. It is very easy to set up and with these two AA batteries it's going to last for a long time. Maybe not as long as a Zigbee device because Zigbee devices are known to be the you know really long lasting devices but on the other hand Zigbee is usually run on a coin sense and maybe the reason it uses two AAA batteries because it does have a higher power consumption and probably the two uh, AAA batteries compensate for that. But as you can see, it is a great addition, especially because you always know the actual state. You always know whether your door or window is open or closed. And with scenes, you can easily integrate it with any other son of device. Also keep in mind that I have received a very similar device because Sonoff has released a window and a door sensor which works on Zigbee. So it works together with the Zigbee bridge. So it's probably going to be a very similar functionality, just works on a different communication protocol. But if you like this device, you will find purchasing links in the video description. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.